The bicycle ambulances are made from mild steel tubing, standard hardware, bicycle components, and sturdy upholstery. The ambulances consist of a trailer, a stretcher, and a hitch to attach the ambulance to a standard bicycle. The video shows the basic fabrication of a bicycle ambulance. While it shows the use of jigs and fixtures, the ambulance can be made with only a vise, a hacksaw, file, welder, and layout tools. The trailer and stretcher frames are made from bent 25mm tubing. We are using Hossfeld bending dies to create 90 degree bends. The red jig here is a tool used to quickly locate the start of each bend. For each part, a different stop is used. The part we are bending is the outside frame of the ambulance. It is the only part with more than two bends. Note how Tate Eliezer aligns the existing bend with the top of the bending dies to ensure that the bends are in one plane. Be sure to avoid aligning with the letters on the die. Note the stop on the bender frame, which has been calibrated to give us a 90 degree bend for every new bend, grease must be applied and spread onto the sliding block of the bender. The stationary block and the circular die must stay free of grease and be wiped clean periodically. Ensure that the part is in one plane and adjust as necessary manually. Check for 90 degree angles as well, particularly if you are not using a calibrated bender frame as we are here. Check that the part has the same width at both ends and adjust manually. To locate the start of a bend, align the mark on your tube with a small line on the circular bending die. The seam on the tube should be on the top of the bend. Before welding any frame parts together, you should check that each part is in one plane, has right angles, and has the correct measurements. This ambulance is designed to accommodate for bender tolerances of up to 3 millimeters. The trailer frame consists of the outside frame, the inside frame, and the handle. There is also a pulling tube, dropouts, and fenders, which we will fabricate later. Miter the ends of the inside frame and outside frames to fit. Weld the handle to the ambulance frame so that when there are 26 inch wheels on the ambulance, the handle will be located at 840 millimeters above the level of the ground. Fabricate dropouts from 30mm by 30mm by 3mm angle iron, cutting a 10mm wide slot in the middle. Use a threaded rod to hold the dropouts at 100.5mm spacing and align them in the center of the wheel wheels. Weld a bit of 10mm rod to the top of the dropouts to reinforce them to the frame. Bend the fender tube from 19mm by 1.6mm round tubing using a jig made from a bent bicycle rim or plywood. This bending jig produces 5 fenders, enough for 2.5 ambulances from one 6 meter long tube. Bend the tube in slow, consistent motions and use a cheater bar at the end of the tube to get enough leverage. The fender cutting and locating fixture can be used to cut the fenders to the same shape each time and locate them on the ambulance frame on center and vertically. Although the fenders can be aligned slightly after welding to be parallel with each other and plumb to the flame frame, it is much better to align them before welding to avoid torquing the frame. Remove the fixture from the frame and finish welding the inside of the joints. Weld an M16 nut to the pulling tube on the ambulance frame.
guide tubes must be welded onto the sides of the stretcher to allow the stretcher frame to be lowered onto the wheel wells into the proper position. Locate these guide tubes so that when the stretcher is in the backward facing position, the pivot on the backrest is 14 centimeters in front of the dropouts on the trailer frame. The canopy is created from 12 millimeter square tube. The bent ends are held apart by straight lengths of the same material. The ends can be bent in a vise slowly to prevent cracking of the bends. A template should be used to ensure accurate bending. After bending, reshape into one plane if necessary and check against the template once again. Weld these canopy parts together and weld nuts onto one end of the canopy. Weld the other end to bicycle stems while they are attached to the backrest. This part is not removable, but the force required to pivot the canopy is adjustable with the bolts. The stretcher stiffener tube is bent similarly to the fenders. This tube must be welded to the underside of the stretcher so that it does not interfere with the passenger in the seating position. Again, use 19mm tubing for this. Cut the hitch spacing tubes from 19 by 32mm rectangular tubing and the clamps from 25 by 25 by 3mm angle. Weld the hitch spacing tubes to one piece of angle stock, thread one 12mm nut onto the hitch pin, and then slide an assembly of two M12 nuts plus a 1mm spacer onto the hitch pin. Then thread on another nut. Weld the two outer nuts to the ends of the hitch tubes. Weld the nut to the end of the hitch pin to allow a string to be tied through to secure the hitch pin to the ambulance. Drill out all M12 nuts on the hitch. Thread two M10 nuts onto a 25mm long M10 bolt with a 5mm gap between the nuts. Weld one such assembly to each side of the hip hitch clamp with the heads on opposite sides. Make sure that these bolts are parallel. Drill out the nuts next to the heads to 10 to 10.5 millimeters. When welding, be sure you don't get weld in the threads. Weld two M12 nuts in line concentrically, and to the side of these nuts, perpendicularly, weld an M16 nut. Weld two M16 bolts together, each 25 millimeters long perpendicular to each other on the heads. With the M12 nuts on the hitch, this is the universal joint, allowing rotation in all three dimensions. Once the paint is dry, you may proceed with the application of the sheet metal for the fenders. There are two sheet metal parts for the ambulance. The mud guards, which go over the top of the wheels, and the wheel guards, which go on the sides of the wheels. The bottom end of the wheel guards is folded up once. The outside edge of the mud guards is folded under twice, and the inside edge of the mud guards is folded under once. Cut a slot in the wheel guard for the mud guards. Cut another slot for the dropouts. Secure all sheet metal to the ambulance frame with self-drilling, self-tapping sheet metal screws. You should use 10 screws on each of the wheel guards and five screws on each of the mud guards. Use 700 gram weight vinyl upholstery fabric for the stretcher material. The dimensions are 50 centimeters by 200 centimeters for each stretcher. Here I'm cutting material for 12 ambulances. Measuring from one end, which will become the head end, mark the material for hems and the webbing, which will be sewn into the fabric to hold it to the ambulance frame. These dimensions are chosen to provide the most support where needed and to not interfere with the fender guide tubes, feet, and backrest chain. Mark the head and feet end of the stretcher fabric because the spacing is asymmetrical and the head and foot ends use different length pieces of webbing. The stretcher fabric is first hemmed at 5 cm on each side and each end to give an overall dimension of 40 cm by 190 cm. Then sew the six shorter head end webbing pieces and nine longer foot end webbing pieces into the stretcher at the locations marked previously. Use a walking foot sewing machine. 
Each side of the webbing should have five runs on the sewing machine before continuing. Use 26 by 2.1 inch tires on standard front mountain bike wheels. Most wheels will have a 100 mm dropout spacing, but the event, in the event that the hub has a smaller spacing, use washers to fill in the gap. Check that the hubs are properly adjusted. Fill in tires to 200 kPa and attach the wheels to the, to the ambulance trailer frame, ensuring that they are both parallel and vertical. Attach a 35 cm long piece of string to the nut on the hitch pin and the other end around the first bolt on the pulling tube. Singe the ends to prevent fraying. Attach another piece of string between the head end of the backrest and the stretcher frame while the backrest is hooked on the fifth loop of the chain. This will limit the motion of the backrest for safety. Tie loops in the stretcher webbing using the loop tie-in jig. The short setting is for the six loops at the head end while the longer setting is for the nine foot end loops. Note that the head end and foot end stretcher webbings will be different lengths and the knots will be at different locations because the head end stretcher loops only go around the backrest while the foot end stretcher loops go all the way around the stretcher frame. So that when they are tied around the stretcher frame, there is a five centimeter gap between each pair of loops. This will ensure good suspension of the stretcher without requiring excessive suspension rubber. Attach the stretcher fabric to the stretcher frame. Lace the loops in the webbing using road bicycle tubes. Tie a knot in the tube at the pivot and halfway down the foot end of the stretcher. Hem the edges of the canopy material and sew short loops of webbing into the four corners. In the center of the short ends, sew in another short loop of webbing. Attach the canopy fabric to the canopy frame with short pieces of elastic cord tied tight. Cut and burn off all loose threads and frayed ends of the string and the webbing. Test ride each ambulance, first without a passenger and then with a passenger to ensure proper functionality and safety.